Good morning. Good morning to you all out there in the parking lot and out there in TV land, as they used to say, but in the internet. Good to have you worshiping with us. We're Christ Lutheran Church at 2011 Brandon Avenue in beautiful Roanoke, Virginia. It's a nice, cool morning, early fall. Beautiful weather for coming out. Just wear a sweatshirt or a hat, right, right Ed? But you're not in your shorts, right? Okay, you're good, you're good. All right, a few announcements to share with you before we begin worship. We continue with our stewardship drive and we're gonna hear from our own Warren in the back there, the, um, the Burgermeister, the, the um, Cavellmeister. We'll, we'll play anything, we'll hammer it away and give us a good, good understanding of why he volunteers here at the church. Today at 10, gathering in the fellowship hall, well, I'm sorry, not the fellowship hall, grade three through five will be downstairs in the community room. Six through 12th will be upstairs in the youth lounge and the adults will meet in the parlor uh, for together at 10. Discussion groups continue with Pastor Cindy. Continue to check your emails and bulletin inserts for dates and times. Any questions, ask her. She and Chris are away for the weekend. She had a meeting yesterday for planning for the Lost and Found Youth event. And so uh, I'm on my own today. So any mistakes are all on me. And if I forget something or forget to say your name, it's all my fault. Anyway, moving on. This Wednesday, this Wednesday, we are reinstituting the Pastor's Lunch Bunch. The Pastor's Lunch Bunch is a time when we come together for fellowship. Uh, with adult members of the congregation that are available for lunch on Wednesday. Uh, we, we meet at noon in the fellowship hall. And I cook the dinner, and, or lunch rather, and that's why it's called the Pastor's Lunch Bunch. We just ask that you let us know by Tuesday afternoon if you're going to be attending uh, so we have enough food. But I can tell you, if you wake up Wednesday and you say, you yeah, know, I want to go to church, you come. We will feed you, even if I have to cut... Um, Ed's steak in half, right Ed? Okay, that's, that's the sacrifices we make for fellowship. So that's at uh, this Wednesday at noon. Come and join us, it's a good fellowship and food. Uh, we have a poster slash Chris, uh, birthday card down here uh, to your right. There is a table with pens and uh, Ernestine Kinzer uh, celebrated her 100th birthday on Thursday, and we're going to have it. There's going to be a nice reception for her um, this this afternoon at, at her home. And I'm asking all of you here today to just sign a quick note to Ernestine, wishing her a beautiful hundredth birthday. Um, in our prayers, we lift up Ed. Uh, Ed Bisbachi passed away, and we pray for his family. Uh, we pray for other people in the hospital and others in need of prayer. If you have any um, prayer requests for those here, there is that sheet that came with your bulletin. If you have it online, you can type it in uh, to the comments section, and we'll include that, if not today, next week. So let us begin now our worship, as it is found on page one of our bulletin. The bulletin is found for you online uh, at ChristLutheranRoanoke.org. Click on the banner for bulletin for Sunday and, and follow along with us in the service today. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. 
God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before we have the reading, I forgot my good friend, Mr. Mr. Berger. Would you come and tell us? Answer this question, Warren. Yes. Why? Why do you volunteer at Christ Lutheran? I'll let you know. <laughs> First of all, I thought it was appropriate to wear my hat today. It says God's work, air hands. We all know that uh, motto, uh, and it's good to practice that. Now, I'm supposed to talk about volunteering, but I think a more appropriate word is, sh is serving. And we are all here by God's grace, uh, sharing his love. And as Christians, it's incumbent upon us to pass that grace and love out to others. And we can do that by service. 
And there are two types of service here. We can serve those in need, but there's also serve the community of the church as, as we know it. And I like to serve uh, with the um, lunches we do for Ram House, uh, for the social club, and besides that, I've, I've driven the bus for social club and other events. And then besides that even, there's service to the greater community of the church, that's you and me, uh, through committees, through council, through leading uh, prayer sessions or or um, talks, uh, but also planning events, which uh, we will be having that are coming up. So it's always important for us, and we should thank those who are serving us, but we should always look for how can we, uh, through God, serve others with light and grace. And at the end of this uh, service, we are going to be working in the light of God. chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our young people out in internet land, come closer to the screen. I've got a question for you. Do you always do what your mom or dad asks you to do? Do you always clean your room? Get your homework done right away? Take care of your clothes? do things around the house, or you sometimes forget, or get distracted, or, yeah, I just don't want to do it. I, I was one of those kids that uh, would put off doing what my parents told me till the very last minute. I did. My parents would go out for the night, and my oldest sister, Karen, would be in charge of the household, and I can tell you um, that was, that was kind of hard on Karen, because... Uh, having me as a brother kept you busy. But I would remember, too, one of the things I would do sometimes, and I thought it was such a smart thing, I would wait to the last minute till I, you know, I'd watch the clock. I knew my parents were going to come home around 9, so 8.50. Yeah, that's it, 8.50. That's when I'll start washing the dishes. Washing the dishes. You know what I did one time, and it didn't work out real well? I was watching TV or something. And nine o'clock came, and all of a sudden, I could see outside the, the family room window, <gasps> my parents driving up. Oh my gosh. So what was I gonna do? I don't wanna get in trouble. I didn't have time to wash the dishes. I only had time to put them in the freezer. I thought that was a good thing. 
I thought it was a good thing because what are you laughing at? I thought it was genius. It was out of sight, out of mind, and um, I was thinking about later, you know, taking them out and washing them. Like maybe I get up in the middle of the night and I'd be real quiet and do it. <laughs> Didn't work. Next morning, my mom opens the freezer and I can hear her go, "What in the world is this?" And um, Guess what? I got to wash dishes every day for the next week by myself. A lot of times we put off doing what we need to do. Right? We don't want to do the right way. We just want to do the easy way, the shortcut way. And you know what? It doesn't always work so well. I, I, I tell you from my own experience, it just doesn't work that way. But when we're given a chore, given a task, and given the time to do it, and what we need to do it with, all that's stopping us from doing it is ourselves. But when we get our job done, when we get that last dish cleaned and, and dried and put away, we can look and say, oh, I did what I was asked to do. And you know, there's a good feeling that comes up around us, upon us, when we do that, when we give of ourselves, do what needs to be done to help others, to do the job, the work that's before us. So when God asks us to do something, there's a reason that God asks us. When God encourages us to love one another, there's goodness and a purpose to all that. And the more we follow and do what God asks us, and God hears something, God will never ask us something that God won't provide what we need to do it or the help to get it done. But when we get it done, not only do we please God, but you know what? We say to ourselves, I did that. I did that by the help of God. And with God, all things are possible. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 33rd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time came, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, You will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. This is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in your eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Diane and I um, like to use one of those... Uh, Dinner in the box services that you see advertised all the time. Um, this is not a plug, but we use Home Chef. We've used some other ones, and we like it because for the two of us, um, we both work full time, and we, we both work a lot of hours. Then when we come home and it's time to get dinner, it, it can sometimes be tedious 
So you have to, oh, I gotta go to the store, get what we need. Oh, what do we want to eat? I don't know, how about this? And then we've gotta make the, get it, cut it, make it, clean it up. It's a lot of effort. But I do like to eat. I, I'm one of the most uh, polite eaters you've ever met. I only eat to be polite. And I will be as polite as I can be as long as I can be. But the Home Chef, why we use it, uh, for, for us, it's pretty much everything we need to make dinner. And it's in the box or in the bag. And all the ingredients that we need pretty much are, are there. And even instructions on how to make it a nice dinner. But if you know me, I don't follow directions very well. I just look at it, what's in the bag, okay, I'll put this to work. And that's how I make dinner. But it goes really fast. I can usually get dinner uh, from the refrigerator to the plate in 10 minutes or less. I just, I, I can do that. I don't, I just do it. And that makes it great. Then we have time to sit and enjoy our dinner. And it's really quite affordable. So. Uh, it's not as lazy as you think. You still got to put it together. You still got to clean up afterwards. But you can enjoy a fresh cooked meal by your own hands. You know, creation is one of those things that God has done that is totally awesome, totally complete in its production. Because all we really need has been included. <laughs> since the dawn of time in this box we call the earth. Let me give you an example. There's a life-saving drug that owes its existence to moldy, sick cows and rat poison. The drug is called warfarin sodium. It prevents blood clots and it can be a lifesaver for patients who've had a heart attack or a stroke. It naturally thins the blood. And though it's synthetically produced and for uh, continuity and for cost-effectiveness made by companies, it comes from a natural ingredient formation. Coumarin is another blood, uh, blood uh, device. It's a sweet-smelling coag coagulation-inactive chemical found that in, ready for this? In clover, in clover and tonka beans an enzyme that was discovered. It's been there since the dawn of time. Everything we need, everything we need not only to exist, but to be productive and happy is found on this earth. And it's been here all the time. It's taken us the formation of our ability to, to decipher and understand. It's taken us eons to figure a lot of that out. And they're still finding cures for things that are using natural ingredients as the foundation for medications and treatments that have been around again since creation came. God has set us up with all we need to be successful here in Earth. And the church is no exception. You know, when we get right down to it, programs come and go. Ways of doing things come and go. But what we need to be the church, what we really need to be the church, has always been here. Not only since the dawn of time, but definitely and since the birth of Christ. The world needs God's love. The world needs people one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, to share the good news. The world needs each of us working together, doing God's work with our hands, sharing God's grace in real and tangible ways, producing good things for the goodness of God's creation. Isaiah, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse, is actually a prophetic parable. Let me sing of my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. 
He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. What happened? What happened? It started out with such promise and purpose, and it had all it needed. But it needed to be tended. It needed to be tended and worked according to its purpose, according to its potential. And evidently, it yielded wild grapes, not because all of a sudden they existed. It was because whoever was in charge of taking care of that vineyard wasn't taking care of it. I don't know about you, but I enjoy planting. I enjoy planting new flowers, trees, whatever, putting seed in the ground, watching it come and germinate and come out and produce fruit or vegetables. But I gotta be honest with you, I hate weeding. It's just disgusting. Yeah, you gotta pull that stuff out, you gotta pick it out. My problem too, and I made mistakes as a youngster, was sometimes I'd weed whatever came out, even if it may have been the potential plant I should have left alone. It takes, it takes effort to tend a garden. It really does. And the other thing, too, I've found, and I'm not always that good at it, it takes consistency in the tending of the garden to produce a harvest that is worth its weight in gold. You know, you just don't throw the seeds in and come back in three months and harvest the best tomatoes you've ever had. And it just doesn't happen. You've got to work it. And you've also got to do it on a consistent basis. You've got to realize that, oh, oh, can't wait to the last minute to do the dishes. You can't wait to the last minute to tend the garden. It's there. It's interesting, I was doing some research on this passage, and you know, a lot of times when we read scripture, we, we read stuff and, oh yeah, okay, does well, okay, it works well. Well, the word watchtower came up to me. I was like, oh, wait a sec. You know, that's not something we see very often today. What's a watchtower? A watchtower was a structure that usually had one or two stories to it, even in the time of Jesus. And it sometimes was made of wood, or sometimes it was made out of stone and, and piled up high, two stories, with a thick wall on the floor made of untreated stone. And that was for the harvest, the, the, the storage of the harvest. The grapes would be put there, and then the upper part of the tower would act as a place to, to live sometimes, in the time of Jesus even. The, the vineyard was tended by the vintner, by the, the vine keeper, and during the harvest, he would live, or he and his family would live there, up in the second floor, because they wanted to make sure that they were protecting that from, from animals and perhaps marauders coming through but also it gave them the ability to be where they needed to be when they needed to be there. So, so I'm asking all of you to sell your homes and all your possessions and move into the church. And you can all vie for what rooms are the most comfortable and uh, closest to the bathroom, whatever, because we got space in here. We'll make a place for you. Uh, Ed, we'll put you out in the, in the shed out there, okay? So close to your, your beloved John Deere, would that be good? Yes, see, I, you'd be happy. But the point of the watchtower is not only to watch, but to be ready to act when action needs to be taken place. And before building the watchtower, the farmer would plant the grape vines as soon as he could. Because, you know, it would take up to two years. It takes at least two years after planting vines for you to produce any fruit that's worthy and usable. Now, the wild grapes, how did the wild grapes get there? They got there because somebody wasn't tending the vineyard. Because there are wild plants that produce grape-like uh, fruit, but I can tell you, if you've ever seen anything like that and eaten them in, in the wild, they're not really tasty, but the good grapes, the good grapes take tender care to be produced. And when they're cared for, they can produce incredible wine. 
So the parable describes that in Isaiah how his beloved had gone through all this work and waited for his first harvest, but the grapes turned out to be wild. And instead of sweet grapes used for making wine, the, the owner discovers that after all the work he's put in his vineyard, that in essence the harvest is worthless. The parable concludes in the, excuse me, in the seventh verse of Isaiah 5. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice. See, it was the purpose of that planting. Justice, that all people would be treated with dignity and care. But instead he saw bloodshed. Bloodshed. He heard a cry. Israel today, I'm so broken, is filled with bloodshed, hatred, and war. After the atrocities in the last couple of days by Hamas, there's been bloodshed on both sides of the conflict. And we pray for the people of the region and hope for a peaceful resolution of the conflicts and cessation of the acts of violence and terror. For God is grieved. God is grieved. By the destruction, by the destruction of the people and the desecration of this holy land. The vineyard is being destroyed and it has to stop. Throughout the world, people cry out for justice. And yet blood is still shed in hatred and anger. The Lord has given us what we need to produce fine wine and satisfy the thirst of a parched people. And it's up to us to take what God has provided us, our lives, our energies, our abilities, and use them for the good of all the people. The harvest is before us. The grapes are ready. Join us, join us in the vineyard, and let God use us in God's work to make an incredible wine of beauty and grace. Amen.
trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy, strength and resolve of your church throughout the world, that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities, that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ, you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger in all in any need, for healing for the sick, the celebration of Ernestine's hundred years, for recovery from surgery for Bruce and Roger, for Terry and Kyle. Strengthen Greg and Pam, Teresa, Priscilla, Amber, Larry, and Pete, Sylvia, Pam, and Jennifer. Be with Claude and Sherry. Be with Asher and AJ. And bless, O oh Lord, the families of Betty, Phyllis, and Ed. Let them feel your presence and know your grace. God of grace, Hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you said Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness. We wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of God's grace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, our living water, our bread of life, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your Son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share us and to strengthen us with this everlasting feast. 
By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this meal. Come, eat, and live. Thanks be to God. We invite you to come forward for receiving of communion here at the curb for those of you gathered. For those of you in your car to, who wish to partake the body and blood within your car, God's blessing upon those elements of salvation. And for those at home, may you share with one another the bread and the wine and the presence of God.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.